Out and About in LA presents Haunted Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood, California. We've got the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Our mountains are kissed with our name. And we've got more stars than shine in the sky. But we've also got ghosts. Let's start with Raleigh Studios. It's 1915 in Hollywood, California. Birth of a Nation is the number one box office film. By 1910, the population is a mere 300,000 people in Los Angeles. The patent war that sent many of the early filmmakers to the West Coast has settled down. Directors such as D.W. Griffith, Thomas Ince, Max Sennett, and Cecil B. DeMille have moved in and claimed their place in early filmmaking history. Charlie Chaplin and Mary Pickford were the stars on the screen who were known around the world. And a little studio called Raleigh opened. One of the longest running continuously operated studios in the world, Raleigh Studios grew up in Hollywood with over 100 years of history. They can boast two Academy Awards with the film's 1946 Best Year of Their Lives and 1967's In the Heat of the Night. Movie studios during production are a beehive of activity. On stage five in 1932 was no different. The electricians are the angels of the film production. Up high, working the lights, making sure the celluloid stars below were illuminated and beautiful. Enter stage five. As a production was happening, one of these angels up high fell to his death, a tragedy. Stage five at Raleigh is still an active stage. Production's still going on, but that's not the only activity. You see, the electrician who died that day in 1932 still shows up for work. He is known for switching lights on and off and moving 300 pound lights hung high from the rafters, making them swing back and forth. But as soon as the swinging starts, it stops on a dime. There are times when the crew on the stage, when it's empty, hear footsteps walking around. Phantom music is heard when there's no one performing. The electrician who fell off the catwalk all those years before still causes some to feel disoriented and lose their balance. His apparition has even been seen on stage five. He's dressed in period clothes from the 1930s. So if you ever visit Raleigh Studios here in Hollywood, California, Remember to tip your hat to the ghost of stage five. Who's ready to laugh? The Comedy Store in West Hollywood, California has had a lot of identities before it became the Comedy Store we know today. At one time, it was a place called Ciro's. Notorious mobster Mickey Cohen ran business out of Ciro's. In the 1940s, Nightclubs along Sunset Boulevard hosted all manner of citizens and tourists alike. Ciro's opened its doors in the late 1930s. Hollywood was a town primed for live stage shows, champagne, and murders. The mob had come west. A place to see and be seen and at Ciro's, you'll be seen, even if you don't know it. Mickey Cohen had holes drilled in the walls to spy who was coming up the stairs to his office. The gruesome details of Ciro's included torture and mob hits. To this day, guests have seen the apparition of a terrified man in a World War II bomber jacket who fades to nothing before their eyes. That's not funny. 
phantoms walking through walls, and an invisible woman screaming and wailing in the basement can be heard. The basement. It's said that the victims of Mickey Cohen were taken to the basement, tortured and locked in the dark. Current employees of the comedy store have said that they feel a cold, terrifying feeling in the basement. Guests have reported frigid cold spots in the big room and the belly room, even tables being knocked over when no one is around them. If you're walking up the stairs at the comedy store and feel a presence behind you, it may be any one of these spirits. Now please sit down. The show is about to start. Have you ever heard the term movie palace? We don't have movie palaces much anymore. But there was a time in early Hollywood history where the movie palace was a magical place to watch a live show or a feature film every weekend. Let me introduce you to the Pantages Theater, the fabulous Pantages Theater, right on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, located at 6233 Hollywood Boulevard. This used to be called the RKO Pantages, built by Alexander Pantages, and designed by B. Marcus Predica. This beautiful Art Deco theater opened its doors on June 4, 1930. It hosted vaudeville performers from all over the country and first-run feature films. It survived the Great Depression and was sold to Fox West Coast Theaters and Howard Hughes had his personal offices there from 1949 to 1959. It hosted the Academy Awards ceremonies and was dedicated a national landmark in 1978. And it's also haunted. Ushers have seen the man himself, Alexander Pantages, walking up the aisles headed towards the exit. An unwitting usher now and then will open the door for the man only to see him vanish before their very eyes. In 1994, a wardrobe woman was leaving through the darkened theater and got a little disoriented. The lights along the aisles were off. She tripped and fell, but an unknown person grabbed her by the elbow and helped her to her feet. This silent stranger guided her towards the exit doors and when sunlight from the open door allowed the woman to gather her bearings and see, she turned to thank this person and all she saw was a completely empty theater. Howard Hughes. No Hollywood story would be complete without Mr. Hughes. He's also never left. When Niederlander took over the theater in 1992, renovations were done to update the second floor. Howard Hughes's office on the second floor was turned into a conference room. Don't worry, he doesn't mind. One of the executive assistants has felt cold spots and cool breezes where no source of such things could be identified. Howard Hughes has been seen walking down the halls to his old office. At one of the desks, you can hear Howard continuing his day in his old office, drawers being closed and handles being rattled. He's also been spotted on the balcony, watching rehearsals and live shows. And when the security goes up to get rid of the mysterious guest on the balcony, it's empty. Another story about the Pantages. Since the year 1932, a woman has been heard in the auditorium. When the theater is empty, she takes her turn to sing. It doesn't matter what time it is, day or night, she sings on this quiet stage. 
But in 1994, all of that changed. Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat were performing. Although she could not be seen, she could be heard. A microphone picked up the singing specter live in front of an audience. Even today, if a microphone is on, she will take the opportunity to sing. Now, not all of the spirits here are so tame and welcoming. Restoration in the year 2000 began. Apparently, a specter supervisor was hired from the great beyond. He was so involved with watching the work get done that an electrician and a painter both quit on the spot. Is this supervisor Howard Hughes? Is it Alexander Pantages? We don't know. At one point, a painter working on restoration was interrupted by the spectral supervisor. He was seen in his hat climbing over to where the painter was working. He leaned over the painter's shoulder to inspect his work. When the painter asked the man what he needed, the man just disappeared. This management approach has happened the same way to the electrician. This beautiful theater hosts live guests as well. Be sure to check the schedule and say hello to Mr. Pantages and Howard Hughes on the way out. Let's go a little further down the boulevard, shall we? Let's go to Grauman's Chinese Theater. Sid Grauman, beloved friend to the famous faces of early Hollywood. He opened the Chinese Theater on May 18th, 1927. Its opening night showed Cecil B. DeMille's King of Kings. In 1977, Star Wars debuted there. The forecourt has the famous hands and footprints of tons of Hollywood legends, from Harold Lloyd to Groucho Marx's cigar to Daniel Radcliffe and Tom Mix to Gene Autry's horse, Trigger. But it also has ghosts. What is it about these beautiful movie palaces that keep the spirits around? This palatial movie house has grand staircases. It has exceptional architecture, amazing balconies, and ghosts that have never left after the credits rolled. When Sid built the theater, he included secret rooms to host friends in private. These rooms had buzzers to allow them access. Today, those rooms have been sealed off and the buzzers disconnected. But around 1990, employees started hearing the buzzers go off. Someone is still wanting to party. And then there's Fritz. Fritz was a stagehand at the theater. Unfortunately, Fritz ended his life backstage one night. It's said that he is the spirit that still wanders around in the backstage area. You may see his spirit walking behind the curtain. Or you may feel a cold spot or presence of an unseen force. That's Fritz. And then there's sweet little Annabelle, the spirit of a little girl who plays in the theater, moves the curtains, and sometimes moves the chairs. She has been seen by employees and guests alike. If you visit this theater, you will see a great show in a beautiful palace and maybe a spirit or two. The Magic Castle. Who wants to see a trick? Welcome to the clubhouse of magical arts, a mysterious place for magicians and magic enthusiasts. Brothers Bill and Milt Larson opened the castle on January 2nd, 1963. 
It is indeed a castle, sitting at the foot of the Hollywood Hills. It's been dubbed the most unusual private club in the world. In 1989, it was declared a national monument. It was originally built in 1909 by Rollin B. Lane, and it was originally called Holly Chateau. It remained in the Lane family until 1955, when it was sold to Thomas O. Glover. In September of 1961, Milt and Bill Larson and Irene Larson began its conversion from a private home to a private club. Filled with lots of magical memorabilia, lots of pieces are said to be haunted. Another thing about the castle, people have died inside. One unfortunate magician made himself disappear right before his performance. In the Houdini room, guests can communicate with the dead. Funny enough, Harry Houdini was a staunch skeptic of being able to communicate with spirits. In the Houdini seance room, William Larson Sr. worked with Bess, Harry's widow, after he had died. She tried to contact him for 10 years. The seances continue to this day at the castle. Apparently, there are up to 12, so far, ghostly inhabitants here. The original medium, Richard Raymond, was able to communicate with his daughter who had passed away. He believed in the seance. Another medium, Misty Lee, said that she's seen a dark, ghostly figure standing behind a guest one evening during a performance. This man has reported that this dark spirit has followed him ever since. Tricky. Inside the castle is the Hat and Hair Pub. It's only open on Friday and Saturday nights. But guests who visited the Magic Castle during the week say they've seen the apparition of a man that looks just like Lowen Tate bartending. The thing about Lowen is he died a long time ago. Oh, the basement. Why is there something creepy always happening in the basement? When the basement of the Magic Castle was being renovated to create space for new performance areas, workers would see a little girl running up and down the halls playing. They could never identify her, and she has yet to be identified to this day. In 1986, a magician, Chris Michaels, who was waiting his turn to go on stage, had an unfortunate accident. When the stage hand came to let him know it was time for him to go perform, he found an unresponsive Chris, silently sitting in his chair. He had passed away, sitting there waiting his turn. Today, pranks and mishaps happen backstage. Chris must have been a prankster in real life because he still is in the afterlife. The original owner, Roland B. Lane, passed away in the castle. Does his spirit wander the castle? It's possible. The magic castle. Come for the magic, stay for the haunts. Tip your waitresses. Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Before it was called Hollywood Forever Cemetery, it was called Hollywood Memorial Park. It opened in 1899. From sharing land with Paramount Pictures, to shady and neglectful owners, to a modern place of mourning and celebrating the dead, 
thanks to current owner, Tyler Cassidy, Hollywood Forever Cemetery is a special place filled with more stars in the ground than there are in the heavens. The place sits in the heart of Hollywood and boasts burial services of all kinds. There are grounds, mausoleums, and wall crypts. There are live performances and celebrations of life, like on November 1st, Day of the Dead. But there is one thing no one would be surprised to see in a cemetery. Ghosts and spirits. Paramount Studios shares a back wall with the cemetery. So the wall that holds the remains of the infamous Bugsy Siegel has an office for the film studios on the other side. Administrative workers have seen the spirits of people dressed in clothing from the 30s and 40s walk through that wall. It's not uncommon for the living to hear footsteps that belong to no one before their eyes or have their computers or printers turned off. Clifton Webb is said to haunt the Psalms and Abbey Mausoleum. He passed in 1966, but people standing near his crypt hear unusual voices and whispers. They see strange lights and feel cold spots and air drafts and the smell of perfume floating there. If you've ever been to this part of the cemetery, there are no drafts. It's a marble mausoleum, rows of burials inside. In the summer, it's muggy and hot. In the winter, it is very, very cold. The only smell is usually flowers. Phantom spirits. Security guards at night have reported seeing people walking through the graveyard on their security cameras. When they go to investigate, of course there's no one there. Actress Virginia Rappe, she was caught up in the Fatty Arbuckle scandal. That's an entirely different story. She died in 1921 at the very young age of 26. Near her grave, visitors have heard sobbing from the sound of a woman that they can't see. Her grave has a constant cold spot around it. Sometimes, near the anniversary of her death, guests have witnessed a female apparition sitting near the water, knelt down and weeping. Judy Garland has just been interred at Hollywood Forever Cemetery from New York. New sightings of her have been seen walking on the grass at the front entrance. It's said that she looks happy and is looking at the Hollywood sign on Mount Lee, which is clearly visible at the entrance. When you go to visit Cecil B. DeMille, Chris Cornell, or Judy Garland, the gates open at 8.30 a.m. and close at 5 p.m. The mausoleums close at 4 p.m. It is possible to see the rich and famous in Hollywood. Some are just resting in peace.